Lone young men of the dominant tribe, many attracted to the city's louche underworld, whether as players, punters, voyeurs or reporters. I do stories that can, can be seen of a negative nature. That's my job. Yes, there is a sex industry here. Yes, there's drugs here, but get over it. Jonathan Taylor is a 35-year-old British photographer. For four months, Jonathan has been working on a story about a highly addictive new drug. I don't want to get any incident that could be related to my methamphetamine story. But if there's a homicide or if there's something else crop up, I'll cover it. It might be of use at a later, later time for another story that I'm on. But primarily, I'm just trying to cover my one story and see what happens. It's Friday night. It's 11 o'clock. It's kind of likely that there's something might turn up. Ever since I was 14, I've known that I've wanted to be a photographer, right? It's been a dream of mine. The only thing I've ever wanted to do is take pictures. About eight or nine years ago, I was traveling through India and Nepal and Southeast Asia. And I kind of fell in love with the whole Asian scene, you know? But I always miss the pace of either London or Bangkok. But in all honesty, I think Bangkok probably beats London for its pace and speed. I think that's what I love about the place, is the speed of the place. It seems that um, some ladies had shot her husband. We're not sure if the guy's died yet or he's been rushed to the hospital. This is an every night drama and everyone's been here before. Not sure what's happening, obviously. The guy's been shot, he's dead. I haven't collected any information about it yet. When you've got your camera, You've got a sense of not really being there and not really realising that maybe you're in a di difficult situation or, or sometimes even a dangerous situation. You've got a buffer between you and what's happening. They get so used to it that they can smile on the scene, you know what I mean? But it still upsets me. This guy's not directly related to it, but he's the guy that took the body into the hospital, right? He's saying really he's got nothing to do with it, but... You know, I mean, just look at the blood on him, right? It's got something to do with it. I haven't been to a murder scene for a while now, and it, it's upsetting, right? Photographer Jonathan Taylor speaks Thai fluently and probably has more contact with the locals than most other expats. Yet even he remains an outsider, an observer. His everyday life continues to take him to the most desperate parts of the city. He's entering a slum area to photograph drug use, all the people he's been photographing are using a highly addictive new drug called Mad Medicine. It's the new drug of choice for most of the bar girls in the city's strip clubs. Jonathan has spent three months in this risky area in a bid to win their trust. In Britain, this would be a front page story, but Jonathan will be lucky if he sells the pictures at all. This boy has just shocked me by telling me that he started to smoke this from the age of seven years old. He's now 14 years old, and he's now selling it. Um, he sells about 40 tablets a day, uh, and he smokes about 20 a day, which is a huge amount. Um, as you can see, I mean, this guy here is very, sli very slim, you know? And he's kind of slim, but some people are extremely skinny because it, takes away your appetite, you don't sleep. Uh. I'm just trying to illustrate people's life, sometimes in adversity, sometimes struggling against the problems that they might come across, sometimes uh, making a mess of their lives. <laughs> All I'm doing is getting enough money to hire me to do my next job. So yeah, no, I'm never going to give up on, on, on being a photographer because that's what I am, that's what I do. It's not my job, it's what I am.
Bangkok-based British photographer Jonathan Taylor has first-hand experience of the Yabar epidemic and its consequences. Well, the police changed it from horse medicine to crazy medicine. It used to be called horse medicine because people used it and then they could work like a horse. Long distance um, truck drivers used to use it to be able to haul long distances. I started photographing homicides here. I did it for a magazine piece. I went to near enough every homicide in Bangkok in, in a month. And I noticed that about, I reckon about 30 to 40 percent was Yaba related. Here's one of the shots I've got someone smoking the drug. They use a cigarette packet and then cut the foil from the cigarette packet into strips. The paper from the cigarette packet is then rolled into a little pipe and the lighters are adapted so that the flame is really small. Yaba comes in many colours but is often red. Its casual use was evident from watching the smokers that Jonathan now led the cameras to. Never more than 20 tablets a day, but it depends how much they want on a daily basis. When they smoke it, it gives them the power to go out and work and do whatever, but when they stop, it's like they're dead. The Yaba epidemic is fierce, but very senior members of the United Nations fear it could get much worse. I had a chance to speak with photojournalist Jonathan Taylor about this special unit. It's a special police unit. They're, they're trained as midwives. I was lucky because I was asked to uh, photograph this and I thought, I'm going to be there a week. I'm not going to get it. I was with this unit for two hours and there's a call come through. We rush off on, on the bikes and a lady gives birth in the back of a taxi and I got the photograph. One of my favorite photographs is of this lady giving uh, birth in, a car. in the back of a taxi. Jonathan's photographs have graced the cover of Time magazine and numerous international publications. You've lived here for 15 years. What is compelling about Bangkok to you? Um, it's such a diverse culture here. Um, and there's also photographs everywhere. You know, on every street corner there's photographs. And, it's a very, and to a certain ex extent it's a very open society, so the access that I'm allowed here is beyond what, what I'd get in the UK, for instance. Today, Jonathan is giving me photo tips as we explore some of his favorite Bangkok markets. And you get, get your framing right. You've got the fast expanse of the roof sort of leading off with right. people streaming past you. Right. I'd come even lower than that. Photographers are always laying on the floor, unfortunately. Right. What I like about this market, though, is just so long. You can start You start at one end and you sort of walk for about an hour and you still haven't hit the end. For an hour? End, we can hour. walk for an hour? An hour under this cover market, yeah. It looks like we're in the bolts of fabric department here. Now, could you but could you take fat, pick a fabric here and go to the sewing machine part and have something made? That's exactly what people do. Well, I always sort of like looking for no, no, nooks and crannies and unusual places. I'd say so, this is a nook and a cranny. That's the thing with Thailand. No matter where you are, there's always something interesting happening. We're in Chinatown now, and what I like about this place is that it hasn't changed. It hasn't really modernized. It's still the vibrancy of the place that has always been there. The traditional way of life is still here. A shallow depth of field is also good. More than 10% of Thailand's population is ethnic Chinese. Some of Bangkok's earliest businesses started here in the late 1700s when Chinese merchants moved to the newly founded capital. We're now approaching like one of my favorite places to be photographically. If you just sort of Place yourself in the corner here and come down low and then, then frame the shot and then you just wait for life to happen inside the frame. You got about everything, you have terrific color. 